Massachusetts is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the gentleman from Oklahoma, Mr. Cole, my good friend, for yielding me the customary 30 minutes, and I ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks, and I yield myself such time as I may consume. Without objection. Uh, Mr. Speaker, let me, uh, let me start by saying how disappointed I am by the inadequate and long overdue response by this Republican majority to the Zika crisis. With nearly 1,400 Americans, including more than 275 pregnant women, currently infected with the virus, and well over a million cases expected before the end of the year, it is absolutely shameful that this House has failed to act on legislation to adequately fund a response to this uh, potentially devastating crisis. Mr. Speaker, Zika is not coming to the United States. It's here. It's here. And as summer arrives, along with mosquito season, the mosquito that carries the Zika virus will be active and knocking on the doors of our southern states and territories. This is an emergency, and it should be treated as such. But my friends on the other side of the aisle have spent months delaying action and making excuses, and, and, and by making excuses, excuse after excuse after excuse about why we don't need to provide the full funding that our nation's public health experts say we need. Now, I appreciate the fact that uh, my friends on the other side of the aisle um, consider themselves public health experts, but there are people who are trained uh, to be public health experts who tell us that what we're doing here today um, is underfunding uh, an adequate response to this crisis. So I, so I suppose I shouldn't be surprised by this, as my friends in the majority have made it a habit of ignoring the advice of scientists and experts in favor of appeasing a small group uh, in their conference on the extreme right. In February, President Obama requested $1.9 billion to address the public health threat posed by the Zika virus. Instead of taking the swift action needed to confront this crisis, the House delayed and delayed and delayed as the Zika crisis continued to spread. We should have sent a bill to President Obama's desk months ago. But instead, this leadership allowed months to go by without any action on this issue until last week when they brought to the floor a completely inadequate $622 million package that provides only one-third of the funds requested by the administration. House Democrats, under the leadership of Leader Pelosi and Appropriations Committee Ranking Member Lowy, have tried to bring to the floor meaningful emergency funding to address Zika, only to be blocked by House Republicans five times. Five times. While the administration has taken significant steps to help keep Americans safe from the Zika virus, significant additional appropriations are needed. In a letter to Speaker Ryan, OMB Director Sean Donovan and National Security Advisor Susan Rice said that without emergency supplemental funding, mosquito control and surveillance may need to be suspended. State and local governments that manage mosquito control may not be able to, to hire personnel for mosquito mitigation efforts and vaccine developments, which require multi-year funding commitments, may be jeopardized. To make matters worse, Mr. Speaker, House Republicans sent to the floor last week, and again this week, a bill to undermine the Clean Water Act and protections for our waterways under the guise of helping to contain the Zika virus. But the truth of the matter is, the legislation is nothing more than a carve-out for pesticide special interests and would have absolutely no effect on spraying pesticides to combat the spread of the Zika virus. It's a bill my friends have brought to the floor in the past, but they just couldn't help themselves at using this crisis as an excuse to further undermine environmental protections. So instead of working with Democrats to address this public health emergency in a serious bipartisan way that puts the health and safety of, of the American people first, the Republican leadership has once again brought to the floor partisan legislation that will not adequately meet the needs of the CDC, of the NIH, of USAID, and other governmental agencies that are on the front lines responding to this crisis. And let me uh, uh, close, Mr. Speaker, by saying I, uh, you know, I, I, I have great respect for the gentleman from Oklahoma. Um, and, you know, when he says that, uh, you know, he intends to support um, every effort to make sure that adequate funding is available. Um, if, if, if I thought this whole uh, decision was up to him alone, I don't think I would be as 
nervous as I am at this particular point. Um, but, um, you know, his party that is in control has shut this government down. Um, you know, we have seen them lurch from one crisis to another crisis and underfund one priority after another priority. Quite frankly, I don't trust, I don't trust uh, the people who are running this House to do the right thing, to be able to get a majority of their majority to go along with, it, with providing the, the, uh, the appropriate funding. And yes, we all want to be fiscally responsible, but let me tell you this, if, if all you're worried about is the bottom line, and that is the cost, by not adequately funding uh, what is needed to combat this crisis, if, if the costs that will result if this crisis gets out of control will be prohibitive. You ain't seen nothing yet. So we can nickel and dime this all we want, uh, but we do so at our own peril. We ought to be concerned primarily with the safety and well-being of the citizens of this country. But if that's not enough to prompt my friends on the other side of the aisle to support the President's request, I would suggest that the cost of ignoring this problem, of not adequately funding a, a, an appropriate response, uh, will be a cost like you've never seen before. So I urge my colleagues to defeat this rule and to bring up strong bipartisan legislation that will fully fund the administration's request. This is a public health emergency, and we must act now. And I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Oklahoma is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. Thank you.